So four new Doctor Who sets have just been released exclusive to B&M store. So you know what that means. It's time for another quest. Hello everybody, welcome to the Geek's Handbag, coming to you from somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I hope you're keeping well. So, four new Doctor Who sets out, all exclusive to B&M stores. We've got a Keys of Mariner set, a Sensorite set, and two new History of the Dalek sets. So the quest was on, and after a couple of unsuccessful trips to a couple of different B&M stores, I was starting to get a little bit annoyed that I couldn't find them, when, out of the blue, I got a message from my friend Clive Lewis, who said he'd managed to get me the Sensorite set and the Keys of Mariner set. And here he is with his daughter Scarlett presenting me with the sets at the BFI screening of The Evil of the Daleks. What a guy. So let's start by taking a look at these. So first up it's the Sensorite set and you know I was really pleased when this got announced because I'm such a huge fan of the Hartnell era and it seems to have been a popular choice of figures actually. I see a lot of people want to get their hands on the set which is nice to see. The packaging, pretty much what we've come to expect from previous releases. Turning it round we've got a picture of the figures we get in the set. So we've got the First Doctor, Sensorite and Sensorite Elder and then just down here we've got a little bit of blurb about the Sensorite story from 1964. And of course, do pause now if you want to read what it says. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. Keeps it nice and simple and it looks good. So let's set the figures free. Ta-da! And here they are. And I'm just going to say straight away, the figures themselves look fantastic. I'm just going to move into the side for a second though, so we can take a look at this. Because whereas with previous sets, they just had a generic, brightly coloured backdrop, this one comes with this lovely diorama of the Sensorite spaceship, which is a really nice added touch to the set and looks great, especially if you're one of those people that likes to keep your figure sets boxed. So let's start by taking a look at the first Doctor figure. Now we have had a couple of variants of him over the years and this one does use exactly the same sculpt, which is fine because I think they've managed to capture a very good likeness to William Hartnell in it. This one, however, does have a lighter waistcoat, which I really like. You can see the Doctor's monocle hanging down there, his very nice cravat, and turning it around, you can see it's got a slightly lighter gray wash to the hair with lots of nice layers in it, which looks very good. The other very noticeable difference on this figure are the trousers which before were like a grey checkered colour. This time he's wearing a very nice salmon pink. All these figures feature lots of articulation as before so you can put them in various action poses. I can't quite get him to grip his lapels though which is annoying. Hmm. So out of all the variants we've had of the first Doctor figures over the years I really like this one. In fact I think he may be my favourite one so far. And so on to the Sensorite and Sensorite Elder figures and never in a million years did I think we'd get these and they look absolutely wonderful. So both Sensorite figures have been made using the same body sculpt with different paint applications applied to show the difference between the two. I believe the torso of the figure is a reuse of the Axon figure that we got a few years ago which works well. Obviously they've repainted it and they've added on the little spears that we see them holding to their heads in the episode by simply painting them on and adding these little round circular spears. I'm really impressed with the new head sculpts they've created for the Sensorites. They've managed to capture them really well and the paint applications look great with the elder Sensorite having the whiter greyer beard. Apart from the beards, the other noticeable differences between the two Sensorites are the black bands on the arms and of course the elder wearing the black sash. One of my pet hates with any figure is when you can't get it to stand up and it keeps falling over. Well, there's no chance of that with the Sensorites and their iconic flat feet and they look great. Because the B&M sets are considered, in brackets, budget sets, the figures don't often come with accessories, so it's nice to see that both Sensorites come with these egg whisks, I mean probe spears. So the Sensorite set, three lovely figures, it kind of has a magical nostalgic feel to it. It gets a massive thumbs up from me. So next up it's the Keys of Mariner set, it's the same packaging of course, and turning it round you can see the figures that we get, Ian Chesterton, Vord 1 and Vord 2. Plus there's a nice little write up about the Keys of Mariners from 1964. And of course do pause now if you want to read it. And that's it for the packaging so let's set them free. And here they are and once again this looks like a really nice set, the figures look great. And it does come with a nice backdrop from the story as well, with this stone staircase leading into a room with that creepy gargoyle thing in the middle of it. So let's start with the Ian Chesterton figure. I'm so pleased we've got this, and I really hope we get a Susan and Barbara figure to go with him at some point in the future. He's got slightly less articulation in the arms than the other figures. I think that's because they've used an old body sculpt from one of the early master figures for the lower half of his body. But that's fine, it still looks good as Ian Chesterton in his nice smart suit. 
Talking of smart, look at that lovely colourful tie, I really like that. Facially, when I first started to see pictures of this figure, I didn't think they'd really managed to capture much likeness to William Russell. But now I have it in hand, I'd say it's not too bad actually, it's about 70-80% to 80 there. And I'm not really going to complain because it's certainly good enough, and it's just so nice to have a figure of Ian Chesterton. And so on to the Vord figures, who look great, but also very menacing. So Vord 1 has the circular symbol on his head and Vord 2 has the triangle. I'm really impressed with the new head sculpts that have been created for these figures. I think character have done a great job. They look just like they did in the actual episode. The body sculpt, the torso, is once again a reuse of the Axon figure. So just like the Sensorites, it's been repainted, this time black, with an added belt and shoulder strap. And just like the Sensorite figures, there's no danger of these guys falling over on your shelf because they got these big flippers on their feet, just like they did in the episode. The Vords also come with little accessories in the shape of these deadly knives, which can also fit very neatly in the pouch on the side of their belts. The Keys of Mariner set then is truly lovely and I like all three figures. I do hope we get a Susan figure one day though so I can recreate this classic publicity pose with her. But until then, I'm perfectly happy with this. So with two sets in the bag it was time to hit the road and head back to the stores to see if I could find the elusive History of the Dalek sets. Oh well, they've actually got the Keys of Marinus and Sensorite sets in. <gasps> History of the Dalek sets. Oh, they've only got one of each. I'm going to quickly grab them. Do you know, I love that feeling you get when you walk in the store and you first spot the sets on the shelf, that sense of relief. So it's great they had all four sets. I picked up the two Dalek sets I need, obviously, and they look really good. So let's get these bad boys home. And here they are, History of the Daleks, set 5 and 7. Where is set 6, I hear you ask? Well, apparently it looked a little bit too similar to set 5, and they were worried people were going to get confused, so they've held it back until the next wave. So, they both look nice. Let's start by taking a look at History set 5. So this is the Power of the Daleks set. You can clearly see the Daleks there, which look nice. You've got the TARDIS on the side, and turning it round, whoa, we've got quite a big write-up here. So not only does it tell you about the Power of the Dalek story from 1966, there's also a little bit of behind the scenes information, like how they modified the Dalek props for this story. And do pause now if you want to read it all. And that's pretty much it for the packaging, so let's take a look at the Daleks themselves. Now, you'll have to forgive me, I haven't got room to display these Daleks at the moment, so rather than take them out and get them all dusty, I am going to keep them boxed for the moment, but we can still get a good look at them. So on first glance they do look very similar, they're both silver and they've both got these lovely blue ivory Dalek bumps but wait there is a difference, this one doesn't have a plunger, no he's got this big sieve that was used for carrying around Dalek mutant blobs. The eye dilation between the two Daleks is also different, this one has a much smaller eye whereas the Dalek with the sieve has a much larger one. I would imagine most people buying this set will be buying it for the Dalek with the sieve because he is something a little bit different. I was hoping the sieve would extend and retract on the arm but unfortunately it doesn't even though it looks like it does because it's just one solid moulded piece of plastic. However you can move it around and it does look good. Like the other sets this one comes with a nice backdrop. This time we've got this Dalek room which has some computer screens in it and of course those iconic Dalek doors. So I'm going to be completely honest with you, I wasn't that excited when this set got announced because I got so many Daleks and I didn't think there was enough variation in these ones, just silver and blue. They just felt a little bit bland. But having said that, now I've got it in hand, I do like the big sieve and I do think it's a nice Dalek set. And the final set, the History of the Daleks 7, Day of the Daleks. God, this looks really nice. So, turning it round, you've got the usual little write-up about the story itself. So, the Day of the Daleks, which was shown in 1972. And, of course, there's a little bit of behind-the-scenes information about what they did to the Dalek props in the story. Do pause now if you want to read it. And that's it for the packaging, and here they are. And you know what, guys? These look gorgeous. I know I was saying earlier that I'd got too many Daleks and I hadn't got room to display them, but these two really are something special. I love the look of them. And this set also comes with a nice backdrop, which is very appropriate for this story. It's the archway that the Daleks and the Ogrons appear through, which is quite iconic. You can see the tunnel effect there and the Dalek. And if you look very carefully, you can also see a service robot from Blake 7. 
And there he is, and it's not the first time I've had a Blake 7 Easter egg put in these sets. As a huge Blake 7 fan, that really pleases me. And here's the Dalek. So you've got the Gold Supreme Dalek, and finally we get a Gunmetal Grey Dalek. And like the previous set, I have to admit I wasn't overly excited when this set was first announced, because I've already got one of the Gold Daleks. We'll come back to him in just a minute. But now I have the set in hand, it really does look great. I love this sort of shiny metallic finish that both the Daleks have been given. It really makes them stand out. So bringing in the previous release of the Gold Dalek for comparison, you can see the main differences, apart from the fact it doesn't have that nice shiny metallic finish, is the mesh on the Dalek neck which was previously painted black on the new version is completely gold and that looks a lot nicer and a tiny little detail the ball on the sucker arm of this Dalek is gold whereas on the new version it's silver so overall the new version is a lot more screen accurate. So only a couple of little differences, but I have to say they do make a big difference and I think this new version of the Gold Supreme Dalek really does look fantastic. I'm also really impressed with the Gunmetal Grey Dalek, I think he looks really kick-ass. Thanks to this lovely shiny new finish, he looks really close to what we saw on screen. So the Day of the Dalek set really is lovely, I can see why so many people are trying to get their hands on it. I love the Gunmetal Grey Dalek, he looks brilliant. And just a couple of little improvements on the Gold Supreme Dalek really have made him something special. Just don't tell the previous version. So there you have it, four really nice sets and it's great to see some new sculpts and characters being released alongside some really nice repainted reissues. Each set retails for £19.99, which I think is really good value for three figures or two Daleks, especially when they look this good. So overall, this is another nice wave of figures to add to your collection from the ongoing Doctor Who B&M range. So four lovely sets and the quest to find them didn't turn out to be that difficult in the end, which is good. Rumour has it we're going to get a couple more sets before Christmas as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they might be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do check out The Geek's Handbag on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget, I also do a weekly Doctor Who podcast for Gary that goes out every Friday called The Big Blue Box Podcast, so do give that a listen. But until the next time, take care of yourselves. Bye bye!